by request. This is the horizontal cannon on a cliff tutorial. Part A. It says that at some time T G, which I guess stands for the time that it hits the ground, if you know that time it hits the ground in, then what position, what vertical position will the cannonball be at half the time? So what's this position? What's the position of the ball at the halfway point in time uh, that the cannon hits the ground? So the first question is, how long does it take a cannonball to hit the ground? The question describes the cannonball as being shot horizontally with an initial velocity. It describes it falling, at least in my, uh, some distance h, which in my question is 80 meters. Your distance might be something different. But so, so we'll just leave it as h for as long as possible. We know gravity is pulling it at 9.8 meters per second downward. So let's ask, uh, how long does anything take to fall 80 meters? So what is the time to the ground? Well, one thing we should realize is that this horizontal motion will affect not at all the time it takes to fall to the ground. We've seen this in uh, questions before about books sliding off desks. We've seen this in the lab when the ball launcher shot to the side. We've seen it on a demo in class that objects with horizontal motion fall downwards in an arc but hit the ground in exactly the same time that it takes any other object just to fall straight down. Horizontal velocity has nothing to do with vertical motion and it will have nothing to do with affecting the time. So the real question is, how long does it take a cannonball to fall 80 meters? That's a question uh, regarding, that's a, a question about vertical motion. Vertical motion has an acceleration. Uh, we have distances involved. Uh, so we can use a kinematic equation. I'm going to choose this one. Uh, x final is equal to x initial plus the initial velocity through time plus one half the acceleration through time squared. Now for our situation, y final, uh, I'm just going to change these to y's. It's on the equation sheet in terms of x, but I'm just switching it to y's now. So in our situation, if we have this as our axis, our, our final position in the y is 0. Our initial position is h. So whatever value of h, I could put 50 meters, I could put 80 meters in there in mine. You would uh, know this value. You could substitute that in. But uh, our initial position is h. Our initial velocity is not v naught. It's not this initial velocity horizontal. This is a vertical problem. I'm going to put here, this is a vertical. I'm just going to try and indicate we're talk, talking about motion up and down. Our initial velocity in the vertical direction, in the y direction, is zero. That's zero. It's very important. That makes this a lot easier because this middle term is gone. In the vertical direction, g is 9.8 meters per second downwards, which I'm going to indicate by a negative sign because I've said upwards is positive in the y direction, meters per second squared, and now I have a delta t squared. Uh, delta t is final minus initial. My final time is the time it hits the ground. My initial time Let's say I start the timer at zero, so that's my delta t is just t to the ground. And now I'm going to solve. I'm going to, there's already a negative sign in here, so I'm going to bring this all to the left-hand side by adding that term to both sides. One half, 9.8 meters per second squared, t 
at the time it takes to hit the ground squared is equal to the height times both sides by 2, divide both sides by g, 9.8, and there's the h, there's the height, that's already some number, when times it by 2, divide by 9.8 meters per second squared, And now I can take the square root, and there we go. So you know the height, you know gravity, place this in, and that's going to give you a value for the time that it takes to hit the ground. You want to know, uh, so now half that, we want to know what the position at half of t. So you're going to divide by 2, so now I'm going to presume that from this value, you can figure out what half of that time is. Cut it in half. That's the time it takes to land on the ground. Uh, they ask you, what's the position at half that time? So divide by 2, and you'll, uh, you'll, you'll know that time. Now you can use that time in this position, the same formula. Your final position is the, is the position that you're asking about. Your initial position is, is uh, h. You know that height, put it in. Your initial velocity again is zero. Uh, in the y direction, it's zero. Uh, so now we look at the in, uh, acceleration, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And the delta t is this, is half the time we, we figured squared. You know everything. Height, acceleration, that time, we just calculated it, divide by 2, plug it in, figure out where it is.